Welcome to my channel. I'm Veronica and this is Veronica's Bookshelves. I'm very glad to have you here. Today I am going to be doing a very special book haul. It's a book haul with the classics of Brazilian literature. Why? Because I am originally from Brazil. Brazilian Portuguese is my native language, so I am going to be reading these books and rereading some of these books that are very precious to me because they're a part of my life, part of my childhood, my teenage, teenage days growing up in Brazil. So I'm very excited about this uh, book haul. I'd like to thank my best friend, Ale, for bringing them to me when she came uh, to visit not long ago. And um, yeah, let's begin. So the first book that I would like to share with you, oh, but before I start, I just want to say that I am not going to go into details about these books because the idea is to actually uh, read them and do a review of them, especially because some of them I don't really remember reading, which is very nice. Um, not in a very good way because um, I changed the way I read books since I was, of course, a teenager to nowadays. Nowadays, I pay more attention. I read, um, I bookmark, um, I actually tab my books. And back then, I used to do to just read, um, especially for the sake of reading, if you're reading for school, to do an assignment or something like that. And that's mainly the majority of these books. That's exactly what happened. I've read them because it was part of the curriculum uh, at the school. So the first one that I'd like to share with you is a book by Graciliano Ramos, which is Vida e Secas. This book, I don't have a recollection of reading it, but I'm sure I've read it because I know the plot. Um, I just don't remember character development or anything like this. So I will be definitely diving into this book with a completely different mind this time. And uh, oh, it smells so good. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm going to be reading this book um, soon. I don't know when I'm going to start and which order I'm going to actually use to read these books. But this is definitely one of the ones that I am most excited about because I know we talked about the struggles. Um, that's so, sort of what I can remember. I haven't even read a, a review of this book or anything because I just want to be fresh, like have a fresh mind when I get to read it again. So I know it talks about the, the struggles of the Northeastern people in Brazil. And um, it's a very, as far as I can remember I don't have truly a recollection of reading this book um, but I'm sure I've read it but from what I can remember it's it's a very heavy book um, because it, it talks about these struggles and so on so I'm I'm very glad I got it and I'm very interested in rereading it or reading it for the first time I think when I start reading it I'm gonna probably just have that uh, light bulb moment where you're like okay I've read this book before you know what I mean so this is the first one on the list. The second one of the list is Makunaima by Mario Giandraji. And as you can see, this is a very, very cute edition of the book, by the way. Um, it comes like in black and white pages, um, which I find amazing. And as you can see, there are some illustrations as well. You see, oh, the illustrations are beautiful. There are some gorgeous, gorgeous pages illustrated and when I saw this edition I was very much excited because I was like wow this is a beautiful gorgeous edition for me to collect um so it, yeah look I really like the the way that the, the drawings were made very very good so this is another book on my list uh, once again I am not going to go into detail about this book. I'm sure I've read this book when I was about 14 uh, for school to do an assignment again. And um, I do recall reading it, this one. So it's going to be very interesting uh, to me revisiting these books, um, especially this one, because I, I, I'm i sure I remember what it's fully about, but it's going to be so much fun rereading it. I can't wait. Uh, I really can't wait. Another one that is um, another one of the classics of the Brazilian literature and his Clásicos Melhoramentos is an, um, another book by José de Alencar, which is Iracema. This one is also illustrated. 
it's very very nice illustrations um, and obviously it's a book about the native Brazilians um, which I really I really like to read books about our natives but obviously it's from the perspective of the author which is a um, Portuguese author and it's a book uh, yes he's from Sierra in Brazil so yeah it, it's from the perspective of a Brazilian author who was born in Sierra about the, the natives and Iracema in particular um, it's a very enchanting book from what I can remember and I'm very much excited to to revisit the story. I think I'm excited to revisit all these stories, if I'm completely honest with you. Now, this is the book I'm most excited about reading because I've never read this book. I've read all the books by Clarice Lispector. I'll discover it's so arty. Uh, but I've never read A Paixão Segundo G.H. So this is the book that I am uh, most curious about um, because I've read amazing things about this book. And of course, because I've never read it, I might start with this actually. Um, for June, I might read this book um, and I add it to my June TBR. I don't really like doing TBRs. I don't know about you, if, if you actually do TBRs, monthly TBRs, but I don't. Um, I really don't like it because I sometimes Come across a book that I want to read a bit more than the book in my TBR and uh, it feels like um, I'm betraying the books in my TBR. Sounds crazy but that's how it feels to me, it's like I'm betraying that author because um, I'm putting another book uh, in front of that and I'm giving another book the priority if you know what I mean. So <laughs> yeah but I might include this book by Clarice Lispector in my TBR because it's a book that I've been meaning to read for such a long time and I'm so 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 very glad that I have a copy in my hands right now because of course I could access these books on my Kindle for example or you know online but it's, there's a, something magical about holding the copy of a book and come on the smell is just unbelievable I just love it so yeah I'm very excited about this book one book that I am also really excited to have in my hands, and I do fully remember reading it when I was a teenager, is a book by Machado de Assis, Memórias Postumas de Bryce Coopers. This book, it's the kind of book that I've, I remember stopping many times to, when I was reading it, to think about what the author was saying. And... Yeah, I, I really want to read this one. So now I'm in two minds because I don't know if I read Clarice Lispector first or Machado de Assis, but let's see how it goes. And I'm not going to make any, any promises, but I'm going to definitely, when, when I read these books, I'm going to make a video about each one of them and do my review. Um, I'll also make sure I put links uh, down below on the comments, um, on the, the section of the book, um, of the video saying uh, where I got the book from. Um, of course, I my friend brought them from Brazil. So I'm going to see if I can find a way to, to find them online, to leave a link for these books online um, in Portuguese and see if there are translations, English translations of these books. I'm quite sure this one is one of the books that I can find the translation for, uh, Machado de Assis. I'm sure I've seen it somewhere. Um, but anyway, this is a very, very good book. I highly recommend it and I'm desperate to, to read it again, but I might do it in July or August. Um, I don't know. As I said, I, I just don't like thinking too much about when I'm going to read a particular book. Now, this book here, it's a book that I fully remember reading when I was a teenager growing up in Rio. And it's one of my favorite books of all time, which is another book by José de Alencar, Senhora. Senhora is a book that is it's just, um, it's about 19th century Brazil. And uh, it's, a, it's a very good story, I think. And um, 
I'm so glad I have it this book and I'm going to be able to reread it. And particularly now, because when I was reading these books, as I said, I was a teenager, I had a completely different mentality. Now I'm I'm a grown up, you know, like with my life completely well, I would like to think that my life is completely on track, that I've managed to to realize most of my dreams. I'm not realized to make most of my dreams come true um so yeah i'm very very excited to have this book in my hands so i'm going to be reading them soon so yeah these are the books that i i'm really excited about reading and they're all classics of brazilian literature it's really good to have some books in my native language. I bought a few books from Brazil when I came to live in England, but as you can see, the majority of my books are all in English and they're books that I've bought whilst living here. Um, some of my books are left in my mum's house in Brazil, um, but unfortunately, I I don't know if I'll be able to bring them all because I'll have, it's a heavy suitcase. Mm. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> now, another thing I would like to do in this video is to talk to you about the books that I am currently reading. And I am currently reading four books. I like reading um, like four to five books at the same time, just in case some, some days you just don't feel like reading a nonfiction book or you don't feel like reading fantasy, you feel like reading romance. And then it's good having a variety of, of genres when you're reading books, I think. And at the moment, I'm reading two books on my Kindle. And they are um, The Conjurer, or The Conjurer, um, by Luan G. Smith. It's, it's the third book in the Vine Witch series. It's a series that I, I absolutely adore. The Vine Witch is the first book. Um, I've read it back in 2020, I think it was released in 2020, and I've read in the year that it was released, and I was really happy that I read that book. The second book is The Glamorist. Um, I'm going to post something about this book, um, a review of this book, very soon on my Instagram account. If you'd like to follow me on my Instagram, actually, there you go, you can follow me there if you'd like to. And the other book that I'm also reading on my Kindle is The Secret Garden, which I'm reading with um, a book club on Fable, um, which I'm, I'm really loving it because um, this particular book club, we are reading classics of the English literature. And as I said, as a non-native speaker of the English language, I haven't had a chance to read many of the classics of the English literature. So um, any chance I have to jump into the opportunity to read the classic of the English, English literature, I am currently doing. Um, I'm doing pretty well because I think so far I've read four or five books um, that are classics of the English literature. And it's so satisfying when you, when you get to read something that you've been meaning to read for such a long time. I know you understand me there. And, and you just get to read it. It just feels right. It feels good, doesn't it? I, I just love it. Um, so yeah, those are the two books that I'm reading on my Kindle. I have, don't have a physical copy of these two books, but that's fine. Um, another book that I am currently reading that I've been actually trying to read since March. I know, shameful. But um, this book is making me feel so angry at times and... I think that's why I, I have to stop every time I read to to write down a comment or to just think about a remark that was made. And I, it's just unbelievable, really. It's making me feel quite annoyed and angry at times when I'm reading it. Uh, it's beautifully written by Nathaniel Rich. It's Losing Earth, um, the decade we could have stopped climate change. Um, it, it's very gripping. As, as the, the cover says, and it gives some insight into what happened back in, in the end of the 70s and mainly the 80s as to why we haven't actually taken um, all the advice on climate change seriously. And um, yeah, it angers me reading this book. I'm just saying that. Um, 
and it makes you rethink everything basically everything about climate change about the world we live in about power about greed um and so on so very good book by the way but i'm gonna be definitely doing um, a review of this book soon on my channel and the last book i'm reading that i've only started reading by the way i haven't gone too far on this book is thirsty Circe? Circe? i don't know if i'm pronouncing this correctly i'm sorry if i'm not uh, by Madeline Miller, and it's a very interesting book so far. I think it's historical fiction, um, if I'm not mistaken. And um, yeah, I, I don't know if it's considered another classic. Maybe it is. I haven't really researched it. I was just in the library the other day, and I've read the back cover, and I was like, oh, I probably would like to read this book as well. So. That's why I am reading this book. Um, as I said, I haven't gone too far on it, but I, I I like the way the book is written. That's all I can say. I like the the way the author. I like the way Madeline expresses what the characters are thinking, especially Cersei. 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 Mm. Sorry if I pronounced it wrong. Mm. So yeah, these are the books I am currently reading, and uh, I think that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I am very glad to have you here, and I'll be posting more videos soon. So thank you, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.